Good luck. All right, we're playing Senta. We mow first. Um, I guess we'll stick with. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, we've been playing this a lot lately, so let's stick to playing this. Um, they have to defend the fourth foul pawn, and from here. I don't know how much exactly is up in the air for discussion, theoretically speaking. Yeah, I've seen this silver move played quite a bit to defend against uh, attacks. Um, it's a, this looks like a good defensive... Oh my goodness. I wonder. Um, there's no trap here, right? I keep getting confused as to where the trap is, but I don't think it's bishop 5-5... Five five. And the pawn push. I don't think there's a trap here, so we're just going to continue play as if everything is normal. Uh, produce amino castle, and then attack on uh, the bishop file here. So that's what I've been playing a lot of recently. Uh, this is interesting. And a bit aggressive. I've never seen this before. Um, hmm. Okay, I need to open this line for my rook. And if my rook gets chased away, I should maybe go back to defend against this pawn advance. Oh. I've done this before, haven't I? Um, hmm. I think this is still fine. But it gets complicated very quickly. Alright, so we're going to use the knight and bishop effectively here. Um, as well as at least complete half mino. And I think the idea is that we're going to hit the center with our bishop. They've already defended against this, but I think it's still a viable formation, the Ishida formation. Um, well, also, they have a loose pawn here. That could prove interesting to pursue a little bit. So I'm threatening a pawn drop on the silver's head, but I'm also threatening this pawn on the side here. So, uh, who knows where we're going to end up. Okay. This allows me to have an enduring attack. Um, I've been on the receiving end of this before, and understand more or less how unpleasant it is to be on the receiving end of it. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, now, what do I do about them threatening to push up a rank? Do I have to drop back right now? Um, or is there something more effective I can do with my next move? Hmm. My rook's not useful up here. It looks useful, but it's not. Let's defend against quite a few things on the side of the board. Uh, also, we're threatening to indirectly snap up this pawn. Um, although, dropping the rook back would have been a better way to threaten that, wouldn't it? Um, Alright, so I'm missing out on quite a few opportunities. Um, <sighs> double swinging rook games tend to be kind of complicated to evaluate. 
Okay, so... If I drop back the rook, they'll move the silver again, and I, my chances against the head of the bishop are gone already. Um, so I need to start using my other pieces, but I don't know how to effectively use them here. This looks interesting. So... Temporarily, there's a weakness right here, and there's no question this is a weakness, but also this allows me to secure a foothold in the center of the board and permanently close this diagonal. So I can use this as a starting point for an attack on the king's side. Um... My gold over here is over-concentrated. It's not useful because um, all the actions in all three other corners. Alright, so they're playing Ishida against me. Um, I'm going to drop my rook back so they can't advance this pawn so easily. I still haven't decided where my own bishop goes. Hmm. There are two ideas. One is put it on this diagonal, which is well covered by this gold. Another idea is put it uh, up here so it can support my silver. Well, the gold is not moving anytime soon, so let's put it over here. Then it can protect my king, attack somewhat toward their king, and defend my center a little bit. Oh, I missed that. That is the obvious deficit uh, or weakness of playing what I just played. Um... So I could exchange. Exchanges are going to happen. Let's be the one initiating it. So I'm at least able to respond with a pawn and not have my castle immediately collapse. Um... <laughs> Part of the reason, the motivation for pushing my center pawn was that I was afraid their bishop might use the center square against uh, my king. Um, if I exchange bishops, am I in trouble? Yes. Um, if I bring this silver forward, oh, that by itself doesn't create a weakness. This silver and gold are still... Uh, they could be participating better. Um, the knight here wants to attack too. Where are they going next? I don't know. Lots of indecision here. So they advance their pawn to get the pawn in hand. Their next idea, I guess, is to bring their rook across. Um, the silver back here is useless. It needs to move. I mean, it's defending a square that was already defended. Silvers are not meant to be used that way, so yeah. 
It needs to be more active. So now it could defend the bishop's head, or it could... Well, yeah, it makes sense to go forward one here, giving the bishop some freedom. If I push it to the side, um, they push this and my silver's trapped. So, yeah, this is the best square I can find for it. Um, yeah, my position's very loose at the moment. That is a very strange move. Um, it's exciting. It defends the center. It attacks my pawn, but uh, I don't understand it. And as much as I want to move the knight, moving it would force me to sack it on this square that's heavily defended. Maybe that's the point. Um, maybe it would have been better to move the knight than to move the silver in this particular instance. Because the knight can't do a whole lot just yet. Well, no, the bishop covers this, so the knight could actually run forward and sacrifice itself. Um... Knight takes, pawn takes, silver takes, and I could sack my rook for a silver if I really wanted a silver, but if I had a knight, the knight actually doesn't help me in hand at the moment. So I should maybe try to break on um, the second file here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think trying to break with pawns is probably the right thing to do here. Ideally, I'd just apply a ton of pressure and their position would just crack without me doing anything. But uh, I'm not that bright. I'm not that awesome at shogi to come up with such a combination. Um, oh. Oh, this is the meaning of their play. Okay. I've helped them build Yagra. I always do this. Uh, if I push the edge, pawn takes the lance sack, lance takes pawn drop to win the lance. They drop the lance on my rook's head. I drop a pawn. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. They might drop another pawn, though. Which I might have to return. To, but my idea is, like, I want to open this edge. Um... Lance takes, lance takes, bishop takes, knight takes. I could start dropping other stuff, but... Uh, attacking is hard. Oh, I could also aim at the bishop's head. That's the more obvious target here. Although it's right next to my king. This knight's not attacking yet. Yeah, we need to use this piece to make it a democratic effort where all the pieces get to participate. They still have a pawn in hand, which ruins most of my fun. Um, let's 
So if I sack the Lance, Lance takes, Pawn Drop. I'm going to promote, I'm going to chase their Knight. I mean, what else can I do here? Nothing, so let's do this. Get it over with. And see where we end up next. So yeah, they do have a lance on this edge where it can't really attack anything instantaneously. Um, more concerning is the lance that they have in hand. Uh, as I was saying. So I could sacrifice to take that. Or wait for them to take my knight. Um... I don't really profit from taking this lance. Well... Yeah, I still lose a move, even if I do take it. So... Running is, in this case, a better idea. I need to continue defending this center square against the bishop promotion striking my silver. Or do I? Is that so bad? If bishop takes, if they promote, I retreat my bishop. Their bishop could move to hit my rook. So that is actually bad. So I need to do gold takes. And at the moment everything's defended, but not for long. Um, hmm. Well, if the bishop's promoted here, do I need to chase it? Well, it's just a bad idea. Somehow this is better. My entire castle is floating here. Like, there's tons of holes behind my large pieces, but... Um... But I've gotten behind their line, and they've got a bishop behind my line, so I guess all's fair. Um, well, if they promote this, I can... No, I cannot drop a pawn here. I would like to. Then rook takes and drop a lance, but I cannot do that. So... <sighs> what else can I consider? There's only one file I can drop a pawn on, and it's the one where it, Yagra is very resistant against attacks it from the front. So it's not super helpful for me to try even to do that um, in general. Yeah, so we're going to attack from the side. So we're going to hit the knight. Because we hit the knight, the lance is loose. Because the lance is loose, the bishop's threatening to promote. But then I lose my gold. So I have to figure something out. Um, might have to drop back my rook to hit their promoted bishop. Maybe. Well, that's interesting. That is well spotted on their part. Um, I should have been looking. But I'm almost in Bioyomi, so how much can I blame myself? Do they really want my rook that badly? It's not about the rook, it's about them wanting to promote the knight, isn't it? It's about all the above. Alright, well... What do we do now? It's always the question. I, 
think we just take the knight and we're going to promote our bishop unless they take with this bishop here and we have some more interesting decision to make. Um, okay, we're not taking their lance. What can I do with the knight? Oh, they've run out of pawns. It is my moment to shine. Here we go. Well, I thought I'd get that in right before Byoyomi. Uh, playing it right after Byoyomi serves me no benefit, but I mistimed it. Alright, so I could take the silver, and I have a nice attack here. Um, I could also hit their rook. It has to move, and then I could hit it again. It has to move again, and I do not win the rook. Um, even so, hitting it right now makes a little bit of sense. Because there's no other way I get a tempo, a, a free tempo in this attack. Um, I have something better, though, don't I? My bishop's useless. Let's activate my bishop. My rook's useless, but there's no way to activate it either. I can move it to the edge file. Um, but I'm severely concerned about my king. So, we're going to do this instead. If they block with a piece, I can drop a knight to hit the rook again. They could, depending on what they drop, if they drop the gold, this could get complicated, but... Yeah, the rook's just what I need here. Um... I'm very confused what they are doing, because their king is in far more severe danger than mine is. Um, winning the rook's not going to help them here. Uh, yeah, this is surprising. Unless they're saying that they're up on me by a tempo. Um, I need this silver for my attack to be successful. They don't need a rook to attack me. But I need this silver, and then I could place it right next to their king, and I place my rook on their back rank, and everything is immediately collapsing. So, I don't understand what they're doing. 
I also have like this rook right next to the king drop threat. Um, or actually dropping it further away is more effective here. But yeah, I think they should have moved this to silver. I think they needed it to defend their king. I guess their best chance here is taking my rook, taking my pawn, moving the silver, and somehow escaping. So that takes one, two, three moves to prepare an escape hatch for their king. That's the first. Oh, actually, that's the most important of them. Um, hmm. Wait. That, uh... There's a critical weakness with that. If I take this silver, things get interesting. Okay, I have to take this before their king gets over and is able to take on this square. But now I have a potential fork of a king and a gold. Um... I thought I saw some way to exploit this. Do I sack the silver in pursuit of something that I'm not certain about? Um, I'm reasoning myself in circles here. It's not working out. But yeah, I have circular reasoning that somehow justified this pawn takes silver. I don't think it is as successful as I was advertising. So I do need to try to maintain this pawn, otherwise their king might escape. I still have overwhelming force. My attack should still succeed, but um, I do need to like try to keep this. We're going to continue trying to cover that square. Material be damned. That square matters. A lot. So. Um. Sanjuvio 
I'm going to draw forward this gold so it can no longer defend the king. Or it's going to plug the square that he's trying to escape the king to. And this is what I meant when I said, like, I have an overwhelming force here. Like, I don't need to... Well, okay, the king could actually take the pawn later, can't it? Um, I didn't think we'd end up here. Because I was not thinking correctly. Um, yeah, the king is actually a powerful piece. Interesting. So we want this silver to be part of our attack as well. I considered dropping a pawn here and then realized, well, I've already got a silver... And the silver could support a square even closer to the king. So this makes more sense. And yeah, at this point I can... I just... my attack does not run out. The only way this would run out is if somehow their king could escape, but I think I've taken uh, steps to prevent that. Precautions is the word that I was looking for. Most interesting here, I think, is if somehow their king makes it to where their gold is, uh, I guess this is 6-3, then maybe I have opportunities to drop a silver and continue attacking. But uh, it's a bit messy. Well, rather, I put my rook on the second rank, their king advances, and somehow put a silver on the second their king is running around. It's a little tricky to follow. Okay, they're trying to escape the king this direction. But I can take the gold and then drop a heavy piece here. And there's just no escape whatsoever. Because I have lots and lots of material. So this just directly mates. So two variations. One is silver drop 6-4. The other is rook drop 6-1. Both of them look very promising. I should read them out, but I'm very confident in this attack, so I'm not reading, which is a character flaw. It really is, but what can they do? Goal, rook drop, any piece interposes, silver drop, king retreats, gold drop mate. I mean... Among other mates, like, like rook drop, king over, gold drop, mate in one. This has to mate. The other possibility was just continuing to drop generals and chase the king all the way back into the corner. And then apply it lots and lots of force, but um, I think this is more elegant. Right, so here, uh, what's the most elegant way to mate? Silver drop on which, like 5-2 or 6-4? I'm not sure it even matters. We are spoiled for choice here. This is better because it covers 7-3. Or three seven, and that's mate. Good game, well played. Um, yeah, my attack took off a little bit faster than theirs did. Um, 
and score uh, the game. Yeah, this is a teaching ladder game, so afterward we have the opportunity to analyze anything that either player wants to analyze. Um, I recognize I overslept, so it is a bit late for them. Um, so I'll let them guide us to whatever we want to take a look at first. Yeah, when I did this night drop, I was starting to get very confident about this. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've been on this, this, this pawn drop in front of a gold, when that gold is the piece responsible for the king's safety. Tends to be a critical move. Um... Actually, I was confident um, when I took their silver here. Um, confidence the wrong word. Optimistic. And then later, when I dropped the knight, that's when I started being confident. Uh, I don't know. All right, yeah, let's see. Oh, this is an interesting way to play. So I'm curious. Um... What's their threat, first of all? Um, yeah, so this is like, uh, a nice focal point for my attack. Um, I could just keep attacking this focal point over and over. The bishop has to choose one direction or the other, and this kind of indicates where I want to put my other pieces. Well, that's clever. I've not seen this kind of attack before. Um... That said, my attack is so ridiculously fast here that I can afford to just take stuff that they sacrifice. No? Um, am I not still completely winning this? Perhaps not. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, they actually had quite an attack. I completely discredited this. Um, wow, okay. So, with that in mind, I have to run away. I think I'm still better here. Um, they don't have a check. Their bishop's hanging. Their king's attacked. But it is uh, sharper than I thought, so I need to play carefully here. Oh! Well, if you place the gold, though, then we don't get the same variation, do we? I can escape here? Hmm. You have my curiosity. How's this going to work? I think you need the gold for this attack to be successful. Because your promoted knight blocks your horse. Um... um... <laughs> Wow, so that's, uh, okay. Hmm. 
Um, okay, so I guess what this means is if they do this, I need I need to play more carefully. Interesting. I didn't think that they had anything here. But apparently this is a very unclear or not an easy position. I can still do uh, stuff like this, but it's not as completely lopsided as I thought. Um, that's interesting. So this cuts off their bishop's access to all these squares. And the bishop's the piece that's supporting them dropping additional pieces near my king. No, that just... the king's too prone here. That unfortunately does not work. Um... <laughs> this is a nice little resource that just now I found. Um, yeah. They say don't run from a fork, but I guess knights in general are scary pieces to run from. Thanks. Yeah. That would have been a fantastic way for the game to actually end uh, with this combination. It just there's the free rook. Ah, likewise. Uh, thanks for matching my schedule. Sorry about the ah. Uh, Gonna say hi, uh, Illinois, but they wouldn't know what Illinois is. But yeah, Illinois. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're from. This is public knowledge anyway, so uh, no sense in withholding it. Oh, spent in New Jersey 10 years ago. Ah, I was uh, once there for a brief time. Yeah. Brief is an overstatement. It was a bit of a vacation. Oh well. Um, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> it's a long distance from Japan to New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. yeah, it's a large country. Other countries around the world are quite large, too. USA just looks enormous on a world map. Um, on the 2D map. Just given its location on the 2D array. Other countries are quite huge, but they appear in the center. All right. Have a good night. Um, so we'll do some a little bit more post mortem analysis on this, and probably need to plug it into an engine because I didn't un understand much of this. But, uh, yeah, thanks, their game. Have a nice day. All right. So let's go back to the beginning. Yeah, third file against fourth file tends to favor uh, the outside rook. So attacking, oh, that's right. To draw arrows on this interface, you just use the left mouse button. Um, yeah, attacking on edge files like this um, tends to be more effective than attacks in the center. Uh, because the king will be generally not in the center. I do move my king out of the center, so in general third file has a slight 
advantage against fourth file. Um, I don't know how big that advantage is, but it, theoretically it is a thing. Here I made a mistake already. It's right there. This would have been a nice, nice find. Um, they would have had to protect this pawn, and I'd immediately have an attack on their position. So, this was a huge miss by me. Although, they do get this in. So it's not as if I get bishop 5-5 five, five in this, but... Um, yeah, this would have been a very nice way to start the game. Because they don't have any piece that can attack this pawn. Um, I mean, I wonder... Engines will suggest interesting ideas too, but maybe this is playable? My concern uh, would be that maybe sometime... Maybe not now, but maybe sometime I have this. I don't know. It's hard to know. Um... But yeah, I already had a miss, and so we just play a normal game. Eventually I do find this, and I spend another tempo to go attack it. But at some point they do manage to build up... Oh, that was interesting. So when they played this, this is them indicating they want to build Yagura, and then they successfully build it, because I didn't understand what was going on. So yeah, once they got the pawn in hand, they prepared this and did it. Uh, and well done. Because I didn't stop them. Um, although, arguably, this is just not necessary. It looks beautiful. Um, but there's really no point in it right now. Well, now that they've played gold, gold, silver here, you don't actually need to play the Agra shape to get that kind of hardness. My own pawn is in the way of my attack at this point. Um, if somehow pieces were to exchange, having this pawn here would be a benefit to me. But right now I can't force a piece exchange. So right now, um, I think they'd be better served to do something other than trying to build Yagra, but I don't know. Your opinion will probably differ from mine. Um, so they successfully build it. Um... I let them build it, because there's nothing I can do. I sack. Now that my knight is in place, all my pieces are as best placed as I can have them. Uh, they win some material. They promote their bishop. And yeah, I was correct to defend against this bishop promotion here, which would have been very painful. Um, they have a pawn in hand. Otherwise, I would consider dropping the lance right in front of their rook. And I don't know any way to remove the pawn from their hand, so I just attack. They still have a pawn in hand. Um, I wonder... I could have considered this. I tried to consider it. Um, perhaps also meriting consideration is this idea. I was concerned... I thought the knight would promote, and this would somehow be strong, but... I don't know. Oh, during the game I was also looking at this. I don't like that, but um, potentially it's an idea. But this seemed more forceful, and this I think is just a huge whiff on their part, and my attack just soars because they don't have a pawn in hand anymore. Immediately this becomes useful, and I can take their knight. I could take their silver and probably should. Um... I somehow thought, like, having this lance in hand, trying to stop their attack, would be successful. But later, their bishop actually proved useful against uh, my king. I'm not sure whether taking the lance was a good idea. Um, yeah, so engines will read this out more successfully than I did. Having the rook actually proved very useful. Um, so... I fully expected, like, a gold drop or a bishop drop here to try to save the rook. It doesn't help their attack very much, but I thought they would do it anyway. I don't know. It's a strange position. 
Also, like, they don't need to initiate this exchange. I could ish initiate it and then bring their bishop back to help defend their king. Um, yeah, somehow I just assumed a large initiative here. Taking my bit, uh, the bishop here might not be the most useful piece to them. Maybe they need to do something like this first. Um, and ask me where my rook belongs, uh, while also threatening to bring this toward my king. Maybe this needed to be done. Although I do have the lance now, I could chase their rook. Um, Yeah, this might have been a much better chance for them to survive, even if somehow my horse escapes this. There's just too much hanging. Double swinging rooks tend to be this chaotic, and they require careful attention, and it's just difficult um, to read out all this stuff. We had some... oh. Taking the silver here, even though I thought it was clever, maybe it was not so clever. It defends a square that's very important to their king, but what square isn't? Like, every square is important to their king, so... Um, yeah, maybe taking the silver was not the best use of this. Um... My rook is still hanging, so I want to urgently do something against their king. And I wanted to remove this gold as far away from their king as I could. Um, and I did that. I wonder if this would have been okay. Oh, that's right. I was commenting I didn't want to see that. Is this so bad? Maybe not. Um, so we're threatening to drop a silver here. Um, yeah, this actually is... Well... Oh my goodness. Yeah, my attack is just overwhelming, so it doesn't matter. But if it does matter, I miss reading something in this analysis. Taking here, I guess, was not accurate. Um, just because I already have an overwhelming attack. But I guess for dramatic effect, we have the game finale. Um, yeah, this pawn drop, knight drop, pawn drop, silver capture seemed uh, exactly right here. And I think their king has to run. Um, unless somehow... Could this be survived? It's not easy to figure out. It seems like if there is some way to survive, this has to be it. But how could this work? Oh, right, I still have this thing too. Does this work this time? This check. This does not work in this position because I don't have a gold. So... Maybe this is the right way. And I'm just out of firepower. Or maybe this works. I don't know. I picked this as my candidate move. I'm trying to surround their king. There's just a lot of places the king could run to. Um, so, like, they try to run this way, I have this drop. Um, yeah, my attack is just so much faster here, so... Uh, they're right that this knight drop is excellent. This does not help them. Uh, at this point, this is like do or die, they have to attack me, and... They just did not find a winning attack in this position. There might be one somewhere. Um, alternatively, my rook is still hanging. Maybe they needed to take the rook and then try to remove this pawn before... Um, I don't know. It becomes too late. 
Removing the knight. Like, wait. Did I read this during the game? I thought I did. But let's keep myself honest. Did I actually read this during the game? What was I going to do here? Huh. That's not good. That is not good. Hmm. Yeah, I thought I read this out during the game, but I'm not seeing any move here. I mean, I'm seeing things like... Rook drop here. King runs. Uh, rook drop or pawn drop? Doesn't really matter. This attack is so slow compared to what we had in the game. It might still be winning, but um, if so, that's more a coincidence than anything else. Um, yes, yeah, so this knight drop felt right. And it inspired panic, but... That's a slow attack. Um, yeah, I think I just misplayed, and perhaps they did too. Hard to say. Interesting game, though. Uh, yeah, we play the teaching ladder so we can review games, and uh, I'll be putting this into an engine to point out any and all mistakes. Um, and I'll do some off-stream analysis of it, and if anything major uh, arises from it, we'll uh, share that analysis at a future point. So, thanks for watching.